Hey, it's Scott, and today we've got a very quick walkthrough of the Hollyview mobile app that works together with the Hollyland Mars 400S, which I have right here. If you want to see my full review of the Mars 400 and 400S wireless video kits, then you can check the link on screen somewhere right now and also down in the video description below. But basically what this is, is a very affordable wireless video kit that of course works with a transmitter and a receiver, but also works with mobile devices up to four at the same time together with that receiver. So it's a really, really versatile kit and it's also very affordable, very compact, really great choice. One of the best on the market at the moment. Anyway, today what we're going to do is just walk you through that app. We'll show you how to get connected. We'll show you what's included in terms of assist features, how to customize them, and just the other general basics of the app so that way you can get a better idea of how to navigate it or what's included if you haven't already got this kit in your hands. So let's head over to the table and check it out. All right, so first off, we're gonna go ahead and get the Holy Land powered up and connected. I'm going to plug it into my uh, V-mount battery here using this D-tap to DC cable, and that will supply my power. And then I'm gonna use an SDI cable coming out of the B uh, Port Keys BM5, which I have mounted on my Zcam E2, just because why not? This is the SDI version so I might as well use it. And then with the little switch on the side, power this on and you'll be ready to go in just a few seconds. So of course you're gonna start off by opening up the Holly View app. And when you come to the home screen, this is what it's gonna look like. Down at the bottom, you have your device, which is of course the device you're connecting to. You have your album tab, which will have your screenshots and recorded videos. And then you have the me tab, which shows you your language app version and device version if you wanna customize that or check that. Going back to the device page, you can choose either the 400S or the 400. I have the 400S, so I'm gonna to connect to that. Once you click connect, mine just automatically connected because I did it before. That's another nice point of the system is that actually if you completely close the app, I've even actually updated my iOS in between the last time that I connected in this and still it just automatically connected without having to go through the whole process. But I'm gonna try and get it to disconnect so I can show you that of course, because that's one of the main points of this video. So now heading into this once more, when you click connect, it will bring up this screen right here. So this first default screen is a QR reader. And if you look on the back of the device, right under where the battery is supposed to be mounted, there's a QR code right down here. So you can scan that. Uh, let me see if I can do this here. And if you can get close enough and get a clear shot, it's kind of in the weird position now. There we go. The message will pop up asking if you want to connect to that network. Click join, of course, and then it will connect. And there you go. Now you're connected. Now I'm just looking at, you know, nothing special here, but you can see that it is connected here. Um, and that's all there is to it, really. I'm going to disconnect once more and show you the other way that you can also connect this. Perhaps if your QR code is uh, not really visible, the way you have it mounted on your camera or something, there is one other way that you can connect to this. I guess the other way to do this, once you click connect, on the top here you have the back arrow, of course, as well as this tab that you're currently on. This is the QR code, and then you have one more that looks like a pencil or a pen. And uh, this is just to enter the number, actually, of the device. And you can see it gives you some information where you can find that number. But also, if you look on the screen here on the front display of the transmitter, it has that number right up top. So mine is right here. I'm going to enter that with the keyboard and hit enter. And it will ask you if you want to join. Click join, of course. And again, there, you're ready to go. So that's really all there is to it. There's two different ways to get connected, and both of them are pretty easy. If you tap on screen, it will bring up the different controls. And if you tap again, it will make them disappear. Down the bottom, you have all of your different tools and stuff. And then over on the left side, you can lock this. So if you don't want to mess with things, um, if you're handing this off to the director or to the client, perhaps you don't want them to mess with stuff on here. You can lock the whole screen, which is really, really convenient. On the right side, you have the option to take a photo, a screenshot basically, as well as a video. And those will be saved to your album, which we showed you on the home screen of this. A cool thing about that though, is if you take a screenshot, for example, you can then draw on it. So you can use the different uh, thicknesses of pen. And for perhaps, you know, the director wants to say, uh, let's say edit, this out. I don't know, my writing is terrible, but you can write right on screen there. And then you can either just keep it by hitting the back and it will just save it to that album and it will go back to your live view. You can delete it with the trash can up top or you could send it if you want to immediately send it to somebody, you know, with airdrop, for example, or, you know, save it on Dropbox. So this is a really convenient way to kind of communicate in real time with your director or your client who is looking on with this. If they wanna make notes on here, that maybe they might be worried they would forget after, you can do that very, very easily. I think that's really convenient.
on the top right, these three dots will open up your kind of sub menu. And you can choose your channels on the top. And actually changing the channel here, it will automatically choose the best clearest channel when you first turn this on. But if during recording, you're finding that you're having trouble, you can choose uh, the different channel through here or on the device itself, and it will automatically update. So if I confirm switch to five frequency, you can see on the transmitter here, it automatically changes to channel five as well, and then click join, and you're going to be connected uh, just in seconds. It's really, really simple and foolproof how to do this. After that is the watermark option, which you can turn on or off. You can also have it set to default, or you can click custom and type in like, I want to say, um, let's say job one, just, you know, you can you can name this by your jobs, for example. And then when you take a picture, you can see down the bottom, it does have that little watermark there. So that way, if you want to go through this again, and you want to remember what job this was from, or maybe what day of shooting day one, day two, or, you know, whatever works for you, you can have that little mark on the bottom there if you want to. Finally, after that, you have your Wi-Fi SS uh, ID as well as the password for if you ever need that to connect in some other way. I personally have never needed that. I showed you how I got connected and I've never needed that password, uh, but it does have the name there. Maybe if you want to tell somebody else who's not next to this, maybe a second person pulls out their phone and wants to connect to, you can say, oh, hey, this is the name. This is what you're going to connect to right here. So down the bottom, you have your assist feature, your tools, you have your waveform, histogram, focus peaking, zebras, frame guides, you have magnify, false color, monocolor, and your 3D LUTs. If you want to turn them on or off, just tap once. Your waveform, for example, your histogram. And if you want to customize them, hold it down for a couple seconds. And for example, with the waveform, you can adjust the transparency. For your waveform, you also can adjust the transparency. For focus peaking, you can control the color and the threshold. This is kind of how strong that effect will be from 0 to 100%. For zebras, you can adjust the threshold from 0 to 100%. For your frame guides, you can of course choose the scale, the color of the lines, and the transparency of the area outside those lines. You can choose some different center mark options and you can resize that. Your options for magnify are the size and the color. Your options for false color brings up the actual scale here. So if you're using false colors and you don't know what the colors mean, what exposure values they relate to, holding this down will turn that scale on and off as a reference point. Um, otherwise, when you just tap it, there is no scale. Monocolor will allow you, of course, to choose which color you're working with. And 3D LUT will, of course, turn on the 3D LUT. And you can scroll through some different ones. You can also load them into here. I have some more information about how to do that in my actual review. But of course, just choosing through the list here, tapping this will turn it on and off. You can also delete these uh, LUTs, which are loaded into here right from this menu. One final thing to show you about this app is that if you use your finger on screen up and down on the left side, it will adjust the brightness of the display. And if you use your finger up and down on the right side, it will uh, raise and lower the volume. So those things are definitely not immediately apparent, but there is that control in here because of course the Mars 400 does transmit sound as well, which maybe you can hear my voice and it sounds terrible right now. Also, as one last thing, I did show you how to take a screenshot in here. I'll show you just quickly when you record. Also, if you record things like your false colors, things like your zebras, uh, those are not going to be recorded. So it will just record the image uh, without those effects on top of there. And then when you stop it, it will automatically pop up and start playing that back. So if you want to delete it right away, like if you did it by accident, you can just go ahead and click the delete button right there. Otherwise, when you hit back, it will go back to your live feed. Um, and that will be saved to your album. If we back out of here, go over to your album, you can now see that those things which I've recorded, as well as the screenshot with the notes that I put on there, you can click edit and select more than one of these. And then you can either share them or delete them. For example, clicking delete will just delete it right there. Boom. And they're all gone. So you can clear those out after a shoot. And that's more or less all there is to it. Like I said, if you want to check out my full review of this kit, you can use the link in the video description. Or if you have any other questions or comments, please let me know down below and I will do my best to get back to you. Otherwise, if you liked this video or found it helpful, please do consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. As always, thank you for watching.